get out of those words. Those words make a difference in our life. Those words will transform us, oh God. It will elevate us to another realm. In the name of Jesus, my Father, we give you all the glory. We say, be thou exalted, ancient of days. For in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. We have one more minute. I want us to begin to blast in tongues. Let us begin to speak in other tongues and edify our that as we go into this world, it will be another level in the name of Jesus. Come <laughs> Blessed be your holy name. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. For in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. And so, Father, we thank you. Thank Holy you. Spirit, we welcome you into our presence, oh God. Father, Lord, Lord God Almighty, we'll thank you, oh God, because Lord God Almighty, Lord, you will start with us, oh God. We ask, oh God, that you will give each and every one of us, oh God, the grace, oh God, to understand your word. Uh, Lord, you will cause your light to shine upon your word, oh God, and you will transform us, oh God, in different direction, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Uh, Father, we will be, oh God, a blessing to our generation, oh God, even as we start study, oh God. Father, we will be equipped, oh God, uh, even to do the will of the one who has called us in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, almighty Father, because at the end of it all, oh God, all the glory and honor will be ascribed unto you. Blessed be your mighty name, King of glory. For in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you so much, sister. Linda. God bless you, Mark. God will continue to strengthen you and empower you in Jesus' name. And, um, Paula, are you here? Are you going to, um, uh, if possible, if you can lead us in prayers for five minutes? Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Let's begin to bless the name of the Lord for another time. Let's give him praise. Let's exalt him. Uh, you know, he's been he's been gracious unto us. You know, the revelations yeah, have not been scarce. They've been coming, they've been coming, you know, right from the throne room of heaven, and we have received it. Let's thank you for the lessons we've learned, you know, as the week has started. I tell you several, several points in that you know, have even experienced concerning my life that has been that has been gracious, you know, in 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 the in, in, in the activities, you know, and my work with him. You know, God, God is merciful to us that He has given us, provided with us this opportunity, you know, to study His Word in depth. Let's give Him all glory. Let's ask as we're going to today's study. Oh you Those prayers will confirm. You know, among the, amongst the the sound of two or three witnesses. The words of God have been established in our hearts, in our lives, you know, concerning matters, issues that arise. The word of God will be established. We receive grace to hear and even to do. You know, the Bible says, "More blessed is that that that, that do than them that hear." You know, we want to experience with Jesus such that we not only hear, but we even do the things we've learned. Because it's, it's, it's confirmed, it's guaranteed in my heart that we are going to learn more and more today. God is merciful that we'll learn, we'll learn a lot. I would do, 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 do these words, these words will become life. These words will become life in our hearts. These words will become life in our minds and our souls. Our soul will continue to seek for God. This thirst is not the end. This thirst will continue. In the name of Jesus, we have thoughts. 
Jesus will become, will become like him. Will become like him. We will grow in our in his image. We will grow in his likeness. You know, not just that. We will grow. We will just as we behold him from 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 our lives will become like him we will be we will be transformed we will be transformed to express him let's commit to whoever our preacher for today let's commit to the person that will be teaching us let's ask that the unction will come through for out of his mouth yeah, out of his belly will flow rivers rivers that will be blessed God, it holds millennium author, let him direct you know the course of today's experience that will even grant to learn more who experience more of him in the name of Jesus. God, we trust by your word that you will do that. You say, you feel the three are God and you are there now in our midst. And we believe you being here with us, I'm sure we'll free to you tonight. Every single one of us will be blessed beyond capacity. We'll be blessed beyond capacity. God will give us once again, you know, bigger, bigger, bigger ball. A bigger ball of desire after we get to ask that you shall be We receive grace to be filled. We receive grace to be filled concerning whatever it is you are trusting in the Lord for. That word will come out. That word will come out. We'll quick it out, this. I will quick it out, buddies. In the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' name we are afraid. Amen. For in Jesus' name we are afraid. Amen. Father, I want to thank you for this day. Thank you for once again another time to gather at your feet. Lord, we trust that you will speak through us and we will be blessed and we will be enriched by the knowledge of your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we ask if we, the Holy Spirit begin to confirm, you know, the, the experiences and revelations from two or three people amongst us. Let every single one of us experience you in a new light in Jesus' name. Lord, we ask if we, the hunger that we have we shall be full and we will thirst for more. We will thirst for more and we will be full in the name of Jesus. Lord, help us that this time will not be wasted, you know, but we we'll even learn and we'll, we'll be not only yours, but we'll also do your word in the name of Jesus. We we'll act and we'll become like you as we go from day to day and from glory to glory in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for our prayers. Thank you, Lord Jesus, Jesus. Pray. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Let's let's um pray in the spirit for the next um five minutes. Let's just pray in the spirit. If you can unmute, unmute. Uh, thank you very much for that. Let's pray in the spirit. Let's invite the Holy Spirit into this place. <laughs> So into our midst. You know you are here. We acknowledge your presence. Mani kasikiriyala bababababababababa. Yeme niko umani sakandiriyala sakadiyala boshe. Yele mana koze ke lo. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Come and have your way. Yele mani kasikandirebo. Come and take control. Mani kasikirebo. Ramani kakshobu always to this place. Shikwa kusikishe. Our mindset, our foundation. No mini yala konde. Rimani kasikandirebo. you can pray you can pray let your victory sound go up to the Father. Tonight, let your victory sound go up to the Father. Ramini, 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 
from his spirit to your spirit they begin to cry out begin to cry out to the lord three more minutes pray in the spirit tire in the spirit cry out to the lord you don't want to come here and do the same in this one hour oh god i want to be intentional with your word in this minute, in this time frame, I want to be intentional with your word. In this minute, I want to be intentional with your word. Holy Spirit, not of me that speak, not of any of us that speak, but your spirit will be practicalized in this place. Pray in the spirit, pray in the spirit, pray in the spirit. Ragande, let your expectations be known, no, made known in the spirit. Let your expectations be made known in the spirit. Let your expectations be made known in the spirit. Rani mo kumi ni alakande, rani kasinde ni alaposo. Mani kandele, one more minute, carry it, carry it. Rani kuma sende ya, Holy Spirit yema na sende ya. Rani kando kumpa ni ni alakande ya, kumuni si kande ya. I have come here to receive. I have come here to partake in what you are given in the spirit that is moving in the flow of the power of the Lord. I have come here to flow in you in the power of your name. We move on to the other. 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 In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, like never before. We are now so many. 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 Thank you, Jesus. 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 In the name of Jesus, the Bible says that the spirit of the, the word, the, the word that I speak to you, are spirit and of life. We are going to pray this one prayer in understanding, and we're going to decree that, Lord Jesus, I engage your spirit in my life tonight. Let your word bring me life. As I hear your word tonight, let it bring the life to my being. I engage, I engage my spirit. I engage my spirit with the word for tonight. in Jesus name we're going to pray one more prayer and understand it before we get started we're going to pray this prayer it's the prayer of of yielding to the word of God Present yourself a living sacrifice, only and acceptable, which is your reasonable service. And that only happens when you obey his word. I want you to decree and declare that open my, my heart to your word. Mm -hmm. Help to to your word. To put your word into practice mm -hmm. in my life. Jesus. Pray that prayer. Open my heart to your word. Help me. I cannot pray for myself. I ask that you help me, Lord. 
in Jesus excellent name we have prayed amen. amen Lord Almighty we bless you because you are the reason for all we do you are the reason why we are here Lord you have seen us throughout the days of today and ah, you saw how it went good bad the ugly the pretty the blessed Lord, we are thankful for your grace and mercy upon us. Lord, as we have come here to sit at your feet, to learn, oh God, of your word, oh God, Lord, please replenish and refresh us. Strengthen us with your word, oh God. Take full control of tonight's Bible study. Let your name be glorified. Let the God be free, the mindset, the wrong mindset. Let the hearts of your people be ready. Prepare their hearts so that your word. Let a foundation that is only built on Jesus. There is no foundation mm -hmm. that is than Jesus. Let things of greatness, things of obedience, things that will lead them into greater heights, mm -hmm. spiritually and in every area of their life, let it be built upon this foundation of Christ. Mm -hmm. in the we bless you because you are good. We thank you, O Lord, for your love and your mercy. Have your way. Take control. We usher in the angels and the spirit of the Lord into our midst, O Lord. Lord's angels on assignment, lodges, angels prepared for hot lodges. Let them begin to minister unto us in the name of Jesus. We bless you, God. We give you praise for in Jesus' most excellent name we pray. Amen. Amen. Awesome. So thank you, everyone, for joining. Uh, please, if you can say hello to each other, let's begin to say hi. Hello, you're welcome. You're welcome. Please begin to say hi to somebody here. I'd like you to say hello, 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 hello. Uh, hello good evening hello awesome awesome hey mercy good to see you. all the way from indian india sorry wonderful to have you here wonderful to have you here. hey gabriella i believe you're in brazil awesome to have you here awesome to have you here awesome to have you here. Oh, you can correct me if I'm wrong, though. I believe I, I remember that name. Um, welcome, everyone. Welcome, everyone. It's wonderful to have you here. It's a blessing to be here. It's Friday night, and I know that um, it, some of us are just like finally free from the old, old Namibia. Thank you so much, Gabriela. Thank you. Um, some of us are like, we are finally free from a old work week, and uh, we finally get to rest. And um, tonight is the last um night of our bible study for this week isn't it a wonderful a wonderful time in the presence of god amazing 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 so tonight i would love you guys to engage i would love reactions i would love um i would love you to speak uh because we are all year learning at the feet of jesus i just want to encourage you that the word that is for you will be given unto you tonight in the name of jesus so you're blessed to be here you're blessed to be here you're blessed to be here you're not you did not make a mistake and definitely this word will be profitable unto you in jesus name okay let's do a little bit of recap does um anybody want to share what they remember from um yesterday's night bible study like what are the highlights what stood out to you what were you blessed by please 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 i would love you to speak um what were you blessed by? What was the highlight for you? What do you enjoy? Okay, um, Sister Mercy, you can go ahead. Uh, am I audible? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you loud and clear. All right, so uh, we looked at Adoni Bezek. We looked at how he was he was captured and um and also we looked at the spiritual meaning behind it um mm. there was something very important that was shared was the thumb how the thumb and the fingers were cut you know ka. so we also discussed about instability how the devil wants to make us unstable in our life and um yeah so yeah that's about it and we also saw a pattern on 
how the strong man kept escaping you know um mm. so yeah so these were some things that stood out for me thank you awesome thank you very much mercy thank you so much yes she said a lot of things is there anything else that anybody remembers from last night last night bible study is there anything you remember you want to share um what else is this shit what our sister just shared like it was very 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 um meaningful we had we prayed some prayers last yesterday because we understood that like what happens when they take off your tombs when they take off your big toes we found the essential power and how essential your tombs and your big toes are we found that there is stability in your life because of these two things and we begin to wonder like why didn't it um why didn't they cut off the hands why was it the, the toes and the and the and the tongs? And we begin to speak about this yesterday. Um, Sister Linda, yes, you can go ahead. Uh, we also talked about uh, Uncle Somi admonished us not to always go to battle alone. Mm. And also he said that the spirit of the odds are still here. Mm. So I just wanted to point those two things out. The spirit of the odds. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I think that that was one of the most meaningful things that stood out to me, actually. Um, where he's, he's, he brought the scripture that we know, I think is in the book of Ephesians or so. He said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We, not one person, we wrestle. It is, there's a collectiveness in that statement. And it begins to make sense why you need each other, why we need each other. Why Simeon, why Judah actually? Judah went to Simeon and asked Simeon, Simeon, please. We are going to war. Could you support me in this war? And there was a, when I was going through the scriptures, um, just doing a little bit of recap, when I was going through the scriptures from verse downwards, some of the things that I saw like were really powerful to me. Um, if you remember, I'm just going to share my screen real quick. Uh, give me a second. I'm going to share my screen. Georges, we're still in Georges chapter one, people of God. We have only gotten to verses, verses seven. Wow one week just seven verses truly seven verses a verse a verse a day can change your life we have been changed by this verse so the first thing i see here somebody asked this question when we first started this bible study that um how could they have inquired of god even after joshua had died the person that had the leadership mantle the person that was in connection with god like what could have resulted. How is it possible? One of the things that I find in this scripture is that, I don't know, as I was meditating on this, I just went back and I just, one of the things that came out to me like light, like illumination to me was that the Bible says, where two or more are gathered in my name, I am there. So the things of God, God's presence is evident when people are calling on his name together i think i think that scripture brings to life why it is why it is possible that the lord spoke to them the lord said to them because where two or more are gathered he is there so we see how it begins to like it begins to show us like oh the power of unity the power of praying together the power of iron sharpness iron the power that brings god's words to us. So that is one of the things that I wanted to share. And um, I think it's a very powerful understanding once you begin to realize this. So now I have a, a very um, interesting um, verse tonight from verses eight. Can someone read verse eight for us? Okay, actually, if you can start from, um, if we can start from verses four and stop at verses eight, that would be good. I need a reader, please. You can go ahead. When Judah went up and the Lord delivered the Canaanites and the Perizzites into their hands, and they killed 10,000 men at Bezek. And when they found Adoni Bezek in Bezek and fought against him, and they defeated the Canaanites and the Perizzites, then Adoni Bezek fled and they pursued him and caught him and cut off his thumbs and big toes. And Adoni Bezek said, 70 kings with their thumbs and big toes cut off used to gather 
scraps under my table as I, as I have done. So God has repaid me. Then they brought him to Jerusalem, and there he died. Verse 8. Now the children of Judah fought against Jerusalem and took it. They struck it with the edge of the sword and set the, fire, set the city on fire. Amen. God bless you. God bless you for reading that word. So uh, we just went through some of the things we have spoken about before. Um, I think we looked at verses 6 and verses 7 yesterday, and we saw that they first cut off his toes, they cut off his, his thumbs, and he began to experience what he had done. He began to experience what he had done. And then he died. Then he was killed. I think a scripture, if you go down, I think it was said he was killed. Like before Jerusalem, he was killed. And what we see is that Adonai Bezek, because we talked about praise, I think two, three days ago, two days ago, we talked about praise. And I, I began to say this yesterday, I shared this yesterday, and, I, and it just continues to resonate with me, is that one of the biggest speakers or people that would acknowledge God are these, those who are evil. Because they have encountered God in a, in a certain way. Adoni Bezek began to say, oh, it is God that has done this for me, that has repaid all that I have done, that has repaid everything I did, and he has repaid me for my evil. All the things he has done, all the things that he has, he has messed, the people he has messed up. We spoke about how, how when cutting someone's tongue by cutting someone's leg, how it cripples the person completely, how it is even worse than death. Because this is what happens when you are crippled by the enemy. You will be going to the enemy to even ask for, for, for bread. I, I believe that it was Apostle Selman that said something recently. I was listening to a message, either him or Femi Lazarus, and, and he began to explain this. Apologies for those who don't know them. I'm talking about some men of God. He was speaking about something, and he began to talk about the fact that, um, that what the devil does is that he puts us in a place where we are, into, into a, a, a sort of lifestyle where we become like animals, where the progress and the achievement we're supposed to make, we we are limited because he has cut off what is important to us. And what he does is that he begins to feed us, begins to take care of us. We, we live on feed, secu food security and uh, shelter. That is all. We don't fulfill the purpose. So you can see a Christian that is powerful, but still limited. And that's one of the things we, we began to pray about yesterday. A warfare where we break those bounds, where we break those chains. The Bible says that it says, un unless you bound the strong man, you must first bound the strong man. And that is when we begin to see that this is unnecessary. So we see that Adoni Bezek, when he was bound, when this strong man was bound, the praises of God began to come from his lips unintentionally because the lord had put him into the predicament he had put people into before and we begin to see that instance in his life so one of the things that we are looking at very much today is verses eight it says now the children of judah fought against jerusalem and took it they struck it with the edge of the sword and set the city on fire yes sister linda i, I believe you want to say something or oh, was that a mistake? Sister Linda, we can't hear you just in case you want to speak. Oh, sorry, sorry. I said something just struck me now as you were reading, um, I think, verse 7 again. So, uh, Adoni Bezek knew, the, knew that he was wicked. He knew Ew. that he was doing something evil. He knew that he was doing something bad. He even acknowledged that there is power that there is power in the name of God because he said that God paid him back for the bad thing that he has done. <laughs> that means the devil really blinds us to destruction. Hey, he you. knows what he's doing. So we need to be very, very careful because the devil will do all those things and at the end of the day, blind us to truth and we will be in destruction. No wonder the Bible... Ah. It is well. God bless us. Go ahead. Sorry, sir. No, no, no. Thank you so much for that beautiful contribution. The devil is a is is a, is a bastard. 
There's no other way to say it. It will rubbish you. It will make you feel like he's taking care of you. It will mess up your life and destiny. And he knows the truth. But he will rubbish it in your face. And that is what they have been doing from the beginning. That is what they have been doing from the beginning. You will even see all the demons that Jesus cast out. They will testify of Jesus. They know the truth. They know the truth. They know what is real. They know what the truth is. But still, they will manipulate. They will put, they will persecute. They will put in bondage. All they can put in bondage. But the day you have knowledge, the day you have the truth, which is Jesus, the day you have him, you are set free in the name of Jesus. From every bondage, from everything in your life, I decree and declare today that you are set free in the name of Jesus. I want you to put your reactions. I want you to speak. I want you to say amen. We are praying that in over your life, over your life, the enemy will testify. Ah, God is God is alive. The enemy will testify that God has repaid me for my evil in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, the enemy will testify that God has repaid me for my evil in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 So while I was reading verses eight from the beginning, I know we've had some conversations. I've not even gotten into anything. This is just more of an introduction and setting up the stage for what we will be talking about today. Um, tonight's topic, I just will like to call it obedience in battle. Just follow me on that. Obedience in battle. I, I just begin to see this and some things began to light up in my, in my, in my mind. And I believe that the Spirit of God wants to um, direct us to that topic. So verses 8 says, Now the children of Judah fought against Jerusalem and took it and they struck it with the edge of the sword and set the city on fire. We're going to stay on that verse. That's the only verse we're going to treat today. And we'll be from that, we'll see, we'll go into the New Testament, we'll go back, we'll go forward, we'll go different places, we'll talk about different characters, characters you are familiar with, characters that you may not be familiar with. And we'll look at what the Bible is saying. So I have a question before I get, we, we get started. What um, stands out to you in this verse eight? What stands out to you in verse 8? Anybody? Is there anything that stands out to anybody in verses 8? In verse 8 of the scriptures. Now the children of Judah fought against Jerusalem and took it. They struck it with the edge of the sword and set the city on fire. Does anybody see any familiar city? Any familiar thing in this, in this scripture? In this scripture? Anybody, anybody, anybody? I would like to see if someone can speak, encourage us with your words and uh, and your responses. All right, all right. Uh, I'll just talk about this thing that really stood out for me. It might be a personal revelation, but I pray that as we go into it, it will be a, a understanding from the Most High for every, every one of us in Jesus' name. So he talks about Jerusalem. Jerusalem. If you are not aware, this is possibly one of the few times Jerusalem is mentioned before it begins it begins to become a staple thing. So the, this city is Jerusalem. They kill Adoni Bezek in front of Jerusalem. He did not enter Jerusalem. At the gates, he was killed before Jerusalem. Then the children of Judah took over Jerusalem and they struck it with the edge of the sword. And the city was set on fire. All this thing is a, fulfill a fulfillment of a covenant that God made with Abraham. That this land will be for your possession and those of your seed. And it began from that day on that that covenant began to speak. And many years later, and even during the period of slavery, and 400 years after, this covenant began to manifest. And you see the children of Israel going from one place to another, taking over taking over, conquering places. And you see that before you know it, the entire land of the Canaanites was distributed among the 12 tribes of Israel. And we see one of the conquests that happens. So when we see this word Jerusalem, I have a question for everybody here. What does Jerusalem stand for? What does it mean from the Bible, from what you understand? Can anybody let us know like, what does Jerusalem stand for? What does it mean? What do you get from it? Anybody please, uh, Sister Linda, you can go ahead and start it off for us. 
So Jerusalem practically means peace, right? So I think he was running towards Jerusalem. So I think he was. <laughs> you know what? I'm getting this is getting interesting by the day. It's getting this. so he was running towards Jerusalem and they killed him before he went into the city. Hmm, hmm, hmm. They captured him, they cut off his fingers, and they killed him. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. So we begin to see that Jerusalem is mentioned, and she said one specifically specific thing: the city of peace. The city of peace. Jerusalem. You 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 will find out that there are some names for Jerusalem. If anybody can let me some, know some of their names, some of the names of Jerusalem. If you know it, you can drop it. One of the names for Jerusalem is Salem, just the ending of the of the word Salem. That is one of the names of Jerusalem. One of the names of Jerusalem is Zion. Zion, the city of the Most High. You have come to Mount Zion. Zion. That's one of the names of Jerusalem. So the one thing that interests me in this topic we are looking at is how things were allotted. This city of Jerusalem was not called Jerusalem before. If anybody knows what the city is called before, please you can put it in the, in the group chat. If you know what the statement this city was called, like if you know what this city was called before, you can put it in the group chat. If you look at this same Judges chapter 1, verses 21, it says, But the children of Benjamin did not drive out the Jebusites who inhabited Jerusalem. So the Jebusites dwell, in, dwell with the children of Benjamin in Jerusalem to this day. Yes, thank you, mercy, Salem. So this city that is called Jerusalem right now, at that time, if you look at history, biblical history, and general history, you see that that city was called Jebus. Not Jerusalem, Jebus. Because the people that lived in Jebus were the Jebusites. And those people were a stronghold. Stronghold to the people of Israel. To the people of Israel. So one of the things you should realize, and I'm going to share something real quick. It's just going to be, um, I'm going to share a map. Just a map that I, I have right here. Give me a second. I'm going to share a map. So this is the map of um, the allotments of Jerusalem. We can see where Jerusalem is right here. We can see we can see that Judah is right here. We can see that Simeon is in the, Judah surrounds Simeon. We can see all the all allotments of the twelve tribes of Israel, and we see where Jerusalem is. We see that Jerusalem seems to be in Benjamin because Jerusalem was allotted to the tribe of Benjamin. That man of did it. Jerusalem was allotted to the tribe of Benjamin. But we begin to see a different thing that is happening. We begin to see that when the fight happens in, 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 in the book of Judges, we begin to see that it was Judah that went and fought Jerusalem. And they set the city on fire. Yet still, if you look at the scripture, it says that they could not dislodge the Jebusites from this city. They tried. They could not dislodge them. Still, still, still. This allotment was for the tribe of Benjamin. Now, this is my question. Jerusalem, what is it known for in the Bible? Apart from the fact that it's the city of peace, what is it known for in the Bible? And which tribe does Jerusalem belong to? What is it known for in the Bible? And which tribe does Jerusalem belong to? Are we not Bible scholars? We have Bible scholars here. Bible scholars, Bible scholars. Bible scholars, if you want to use um, Dr. Google, now is the time. So which tribe is Jerusalem? And what is it known for in the Bible? Which tribe in the Bible? When we see in the Bible, where is it mentioned? It? Who is the man? Who is the prominent figure that is mentioned with Jerusalem? And what is it known for in the Bible? Anybody? We are Bible scholars now. Bible scholars. We are all Bible scholars. By the Spirit of God, we are all Bible scholars. Please, 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 please. Let's let's get this. Let's get this. Again, my question. David, God bless you, Sister Mercy. God bless you. David. David was the one that made Jerusalem his capital. David was the one that made Jerusalem 
is capital. Let's do some some scriptures. Um, somebody open to the Bible, you open your Bible to the book of 2 Samuel chapter 5, from verse 6 to 10. We're opening our Bibles to the book of 2 Samuel chapter 5, verses 6 to 10. If you are there, you can go ahead and read 2 Samuel chapter 5, verses 6 to 10. 2 Samuel chapter 5, verses 6. Yes, you can go ahead, please. David then led his men to Jerusalem to fight against the Jebusites, the original inhabitants of the land who were living there. The Jebusites taunted David, saying, You'll never get in here. I'm reading from the NLT version. Go ahead. Okay, NLT. You can go ahead with your translation. The Jebusites taunted David, saying, You'll never get in here. Even the blind and lame could keep you out. For the Jebusites thought they were safe. But David captured the fortress of Zion, which is now called the city of David. Hmm. Should I continue? Yeah. Yes, continue. On the day of the attack, David said to his troops, I hate those lame and blind Jebusites. Whoever attacks them should strike by going into the city through the water tunnel. That is the origin of the saying, the blind and the lame may not enter the house. So David made the fortress his home and he called it the city of David. He extended the city starting at the supporting terraces and working inward. And David became more and more powerful because the Lord God of heaven's armies was with him. The Lord God of heaven's armies was with him. The Lord God of heaven's armies was with him. Last thing I'm going to talk about Jerusalem. If you look at the Bible in the book of Revelations, Revelations chapter 23, sorry, Revelations chapter 21, verses 3. Revelations 21, verses 3. I'm just going to read it real quick. It says that, and I heard a voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He said, It will dwell with his people, and God himself will be with them. I'm trying to find the other scripture. He says that, and the city descended from heaven. That is, um, it's in the same Revelations. Yes, it's the same Revelations chapter 1. It says, Revelations 21, verses 1. It says, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth has passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, come down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. So what is this thing? Now, why are we talking about Jerusalem? It is when we understand the conquest of Jerusalem, the victory that was achieved, what became out of a city that was ruled by evil before. But when the day of conquering happened, it happened completely. That, that city became an everlasting covenant of God with his people. And that is one thing we should understand. We should understand the power of covenant and the power that can be born out of obedience. I'm going to speak a little bit about David because we see David and the Bible says in verses 10, and David became more and more powerful because the Lord God of heaven's army was with him. That is the way we should live our life. That in every war, in the warfare, when you face Adoni Desert, when you face principalities and power, your king is the Lord God Almighty. They fought many times. How many times did they fight against the city? This thing was allotted to the Benjamins, the Benjamites. They fought against the Jebusites. They could not capture the city. They fought again, Judah fought against the city, they could not capture the city. For years in the Georges, this city was not captured. In Saul came and became king. And you see what was happening. There was a relationship in the city. You have the Benjamin in one part of the city, the Jebusite in one part of the, the city, the tribes of Israel in one part of the city, the Jebusite in one part of the city. They were cohesive. And then they had rebelled. And David was like, this city will be conquered. And he approached this warfare with the Lord of heaven's army, Yahweh Sabor. The God of heaven's army was on his side and he went and he overcome this battle that has been there. And then Jerusalem became an everlasting covenant. An everlasting covenant. Another place that this scripture was mentioned 
is in the book of Genesis. Let me see if I can find it. Genesis chapter 14, verses 18. Anybody, if you can open to the book of Genesis chapter 14, verses 18. Genesis chapter 14, verses 18. Real quick, anybody that's there, anybody that's there? Okay, please go ahead, Amir. And Melchizedek, the king of Salem, uh, and a priest of God most high, brought Abraham some bread and wine. Okay, stop over there. You see, Melchizedek, the king of Salem, Jerusalem, There was a victory that needed to be won. And I'm going to, you might be wondering, why am I so adamant on this word, Jerusalem? We know the covenant that is in Jerusalem. We know that a new Jerusalem will be brought. That is enough to guarantee us of the power in the city of peace. Zion, out of Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance and holiness. And they will possess their possession. Why is this important? Because I begin to think about this. Forgive me, it's just the way my own brain works. I begin to think about it. I was like, okay, oh, let's calm down. Where was Saul from? Anybody knows? What tribe was Saul from? The king Saul. Real quick, real quick. Where was Saul from? King Saul. Please, please let me get a response. Where was King Saul from? You can drop in the comments. You can speak. Feel free to talk about it, please, real quick, real quick. Okay, we all know it. King Saul. Okay, don't we know? Don't we know it, please? Give me a reaction if you know this, please. Let me get a reaction. If we don't know it, we will educate ourselves. That's why we are here. Bible scholars are here to learn the Bible and study the Bible. Where was King Saul? What tribe of Israel was King Saul from? Ha! Ah, wow. Okay, oh, we need to. Okay, God bless you. Idim as as. Come out from the Indian places. I like, I like my guy. Thank you so much. God bless you for dropping that. Yes, Benjamite. I'm going to show the. I'm going to show the. Um, forgive me. I'm going to show this this map again. I'm going to show this map because all these things are just. I I, I keep saying it, it's just a prelude to where we are going to. Because I told you today we are talking about obedience in battle. Obedience in battle. Warfare is not grappling. What here is understanding principles of things. There are some principles that we have been learning about how when Esther was going to conquer, she conquered brutally. When she dealt with her enemy, she dealt with them. No man was left behind. You don't live with your Jebusite in your city of Zion. You don't live in your home with the enemy. The enemy don't live with you. When you conquer, you conquer completely. Saul was a Benjamite, and David from Judah. King David was from Judah, and I begin to look at this map, and I was like, ah, "So Benjamin, Judah, Jerusalem. The first king of Israel was from Benj from, from Benjamin, the tribe of Benjamin. The, the the second king of Israel was from from Judah." And I begin to see that what happened? Jerusalem was the allotment of Benjamin. What happened? Why did they not receive their inheritance? Why did it take Judah to come and capture the city that became an everlasting covenant of God's purpose for Israel? I began to wonder about that. And he began to speak to me in a different way. Yes, mercy. Please, go ahead. I was thinking about King Saul yesterday. And mm. there was something I believe uh, God was talking to me about this. It just struck me when you were, when you were sharing. He, God was telling me that when God tells you to finish off something, finish it off completely. Don't have any leftovers or don't hold on to anything. You know? So, so uh, Saul was asked to finish off all of the Amalekites, not keeping anything to himself. But then that disobedience caused the, even though he was anointed, he didn't function in the anointing. And it was passed over to David. So, obedience, yeah. 
Okay. Thank you so much, Mercy. Obedience. Ah, God bless you. And that is what we are talking about today. Obedience. Because obedience is key in warfare. Obedience is key. If you're taking it, just write that. If that's all you take today, in warfare, obedience is key. That's what we are talking about. It's everything we are talking about. We now begin to see Benjamin there, Judah there, king from Benjamin Saul, Judah, Jerusalem. He became the capital. One was rejected, one was chosen because the Bible says I require obedience, not sacrifice. I choose obedience, not sacrifice. You have two kings, two tribes. One was obedient, the other. One was the allotment of Jerusalem, but true obedience, and not that one, actually. You think that when Man, we, if we begin to look at this, the German was allotted. Jerusalem was at the border of Judah and Benjamin. But in the allotment made by Joshua, in Joshua chapter 18, if you look at the book of Joshua chapter 18, just so that we have scriptures to um, back this up, because scriptures are very, very relevant to this. Uh, please, let me, I'm just going to drop it in the, in the, in the, in over there uh probably i can't drop it but in the allotment of benjamin this jerusalem was allotted to them it was allotted to them the bible says in verses 16 says the boundary this is joshua chapter 18 verse 16 said the boundary went down to the foot of the hill facing the valley of ben Enom, not of the valley of Rif, of Rifim. It continued down Enom Valley along the southern slope of the Jebusite city and so on to El Rogel. So the Jebusite city was part, Jebusite city, and we know that Jebusite city is now Jerusalem, was part of the allotment. What disobedience can cause you to lose your allotment? Disobedience can cause you to lose your allotment. In warfare, obedience is key. There are some things you must know in warfare. The first thing you must know in warfare is to inquire of the Lord. That is what we see this, our brothers doing. They went to God. They're like, God, what do we do after? They inquired of God. And God said, do that will go. When David, particularly David we're looking at today, was about to go into warfare. The Bible says in the book of, um, I think, First Samuel chapter 30, verse 8. He says, Shall I? Somebody should open there. First Samuel chapter 30, verse 8. First Samuel 38. First Samuel chapter 30, verse 8. Uh, okay, let me see if I can get there. First Samuel 38. First Samuel 38. First Samuel 38. Anybody that is there can go ahead and read for us. First Samuel 38. Um, for Samuel 30 verse 8, then David asked the Lord, should I chase after this band of raiders? Will I catch them? And the Lord told him, yes, go after them. You will surely recover everything that was taken from you. Amen. He inquired of the Lord and he was told to go and that he went. I begin to repeat this. Obedience is key. When we begin to resolve life, in terms of allotment, Benjamin had Jerusalem. In terms of kingship and ordination, even though they sinned, because even if you look at the tribe of Benjamin, they committed this terrible sin, very terrible sin, that they killed a concubine. Very messy sin, we see it in the book of Judges, very messy. And when God was still picking a king, he picked it from the smallest tribe, from the smallest um, family, he picked Saul. But Saul lost what the allotment God had given him and his tribe because of disobedience. The Bible says about David, it says that David won all, won many battles. He won many battles. Second Samuel chapter eight, verses one. Second Samuel eight, verses one, verses one. Second Samuel eight, verses one. It says, while David was king of Israel, 
He won many battles over the Philistines. He brought them under his control. He took Met Ammon away from them. What is he winning? Because David is obedient. Why did David fulfill his purpose? Because David is obedient. Obedience is key to warfare. When you want to learn warfare, you learn from a, 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 a battle commander like David. That obedience is what breaks old, breaks shackles, leads things, dismantle things. And we're going to practicalize it now because of our time. How is this important? Why is this important? You are in the midst of warfare. You are praying concerning a thing. Are you obeying the promptings of your spirit? Are you obeying it to the letter? Are you obeying it fully? Are you turning to what God is saying? Guys, it is not about just the tribe. It is not about just what people are giving. Or the gifts of men. It's not just about the gifts of men. It's not about how someone's life might seem rosy. It is about the obedience of a man's heart. The Bible says in Romans chapter, the book of Romans chapter, um, let me see if I can find the scripture real quick. The book of Romans, it says that through disobedience, one man led humanity to destruction. And through obedience, one man brought life. To humanity. Obedience is what will change your life. When you are praying and you are crying, are you obeying what God is saying in terms of holiness? In terms of when He says move, is there action to the word? Are you obeying authority? The authority God has placed in front of in, before you, are you obeying? Obedience is the key to your breakthrough. Obedience is the key to warfare. When God is prompting you, when God said, all right now, go around Jericho, shout, and he will come down. Obedience was necessary. Obedience is necessary. I don't know um, if anybody has any statement because when we begin to see the Bible and wonder about what God can do through obedience. Well, we see that the Bible is so funny. The Bible, the, the Bible is so interesting. The allotment was given to Benjamin. Judah carried the allotment. He became the capital for the Judah, for Judah and for David. Himself was the first king. He lost. Oh God, God has given him. I was like, I've been looking, I've been looking at the map. I was like, God I was like, God has already made plans for these cities. And they bother each other such that even when Saul was rejected, there was already plans made. People of God, don't let your disobedience take you away from what God has given to you. Don't let your disobedience take you away from what God has given to you. Because you will know that it's not about the tribe. And what I find the Bible interesting is that Saul was a king. Saul became Paul in the New Testament. Saul was a king, he disobeyed from Benjamin. Paul was from Benjamin. And we all know him today because obedience is key obedience is key um some of you might want to know where um this is in the bible i'm going to see if i can find it real quick um that's in the scripture of um romans chapter um let's see romans chapter one romans chapter 11 verses one he said in Romans chapter 11, verse 1, if you're there, please read it for us. Romans 11, 1. That will be our last scripture for tonight before we begin to pray some prayers. Romans 11, verse 1. Romans 11, verse 1. Romans 11, verse 1. 
Yes. Yes, you can go ahead. Romans 11, 1, I asked, then has God rejected his own people, the nation of Israel? Of course not. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham and a member of the tribe of Benjamin. I myself, a descendant of Abraham. I mean, I'm a member of the tribe of Benjamin. So obedience is the factor. Obedience is the way. Obedience is your way of victory. We have learned one way of victory in this battle. We learned about praise. Now we are learning about obedience. Obedience is the way. Obedience is the key. One of the things I wrote down is that God loves everyone in this world. Yes, of course, so loved the world. I gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Again, God loves everybody, everyone in this world, but he selects the obedient. He loves everyone in this world, but he selects the obedient. That is who he chooses. That is how he does his ways. He selects the obedience. Maybe before you went deep in sin, the Lord took you out of it. And now he has set you apart for his work because of your obedience. Obedience is the key to warfare. Is a key to warfare. Is a key to warfare. All right. Um, I don't know if anybody has any contribution, anything God is placing in your heart, anything you would like to um, speak on. It's been a, a wonderful, wonderful time. And um, it's 10 p.m. So I, 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 I stayed on time. Yes, Sister Mercy. Yes. I have a question because yesterday I was pondering on my own life. And um, I was, because when God told me that you have to finish everything, you cannot you know hold on to certain things you know so i was just thinking what what is it is it that is it social media or is it something in my own life you know that is keeping me from uh living a complete holy consecrated life um so i was just thinking about it so i really want to know more you know about uh what is it that god is highlighting in all of our lives because it is so crucial, right? We might be either addicted to social media or a YouTube, or it can also be that we adore a pastor very much, more than mm. adore. Mm. So uh, um, I really need a breakthrough in this part. Like I, we cannot be like, oh, uh, I, I, I won't do this, I won't do that. That's again a religion. But then am I truly loving God and giving up on mm. things? Or Am I wanting to show that I'm too holy, you know? So, mm. um, yeah. So, so the soul thing can happen to every anyone. I mean, it can happen to anybody. I sometimes get scared, like of two characters. One is Saul, and another is Judas. Uh, mm. Like that can happen to anyone, right? Uh, when we look at Judas, he had love for money, and he was given chances to turn to Jesus. There was grace even then, I believe, but then. I don't know. I mean, such a mystery again. So, and again, then there is a concept of predestination that God has already decided, God has already planned. That's the sovereignty of God. So, yeah, just some thoughts around these, if anyone could help. So, yeah. Okay. So, um, the question is true now. There, we are here for Bible study. Um, please, I would like someone to answer this question, please. Who can help our sister? She has asked a very powerful and beautiful question about um, how we can live holy and things we struggle with and um, how we can let go. And um, I'm, I'm losing some of the questions she asked, but I believe that some of you have heard this. Anybody wants to talk about this? Um, who is here? Who is here? Who is here? Who wants to attempt this question? Sister Linda, blessing, brother Idim. Okay, let's go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead into blessing. Um, I would say I've not gotten to where I want to be yet when it comes to like living 
a holy and consecrated life. But something I've been putting into consideration consideration is consciousness and intentionality because mm -hmm. sometimes we don't even know it just so like we have to be conscious of our thoughts we have to be conscious of i've uh, i've just started this resolution of like being very conscious of what i say and what i think about so you have to be conscious of your thoughts basically just pray put it to god like god help me to give me that spirit of like consciousness and intentionality and i feel like it's just a step-by-step -step process i don't think we can just anybody can just wake up one morning and just be holy all of the day so amen. yeah go with us amen 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 in jesus name yes that is that is true um i know people say this um this three stages of salvation the salvation um um that's justification that's still part of the first one justification um sanctification and glorification so the, the way we can put that all those Sean Sean statement that i just mentioned is that is an understanding that we are saved we are still being saved and we will be saved it's a very very powerful understanding that we are saved we are still being saved and we will be saved i just wanted to say that because um we have to realize that there should be a transformation that is happening in us we have an inner witness that is within us that bears witness with god that voice tells you when there's a prompting in your spirit, and I say prompting because sometimes we, we imagine that we hear God through like a, a live band or through like a loud thing or the boss will start shaking or the giddies. It doesn't usually happen that way when God is speaking to us. It's not like it doesn't happen that way. It does happen that way. But there is something that is even more close to you, which is your inner witness. And God speaks to you through your inner witness. So look at the promptings in your spirit. Pray to God. Align them with the word of God. What is the word of God saying? With what you are, the promptings in the spirit. And obey those promptings. You have to begin to understand that God is Christ. You have an inner witness that is speaking with you. That is speaking. The Holy Spirit is bearing witness with his spirit. That you are a child of God and he's speaking to you. So if he's telling that, oh, social media. Yes, there's, there's an addiction. You already know that. We can't, we can't bring anything above god nothing should take the place of god in your life he's your first love it should remain your first love so i used to check my life and see that okay maybe there are some things that i find god is asking me to let go of and the reason why is just to dedicate just for a time of dedication to prayers sometimes it is so that i have those things have really been kind of like a choke on my head and i have to go back like what our sister said blessed be conscious take Reflect on these things. The Bible says, teach us to number our days so we can apply our years unto wisdom. So reflect on these things. Ask God for wisdom. What are the things that need to go? Maybe a period of time at, or will, would, will help you. Social media, sometimes there are times I fast. Sometimes because a friend is fasting, I might find the prompting all of a sudden to also try to do it. I remember the first time I... I decided to do it. I've never done it before. I didn't think I had a problem with social media. And I went, I just said, let me go off it for a while. And I was like, I was blessed. I found that my, my thoughts were better when I, when I, even when I came back, maybe after a month or two, I felt that things were more aligned. I knew what I was all about more. So listen to the promptings of your spirit. And always remember that Christ is your first love. And anything that is distracting you from your purpose, from your prayer life, from your word life, you have to watch out for those things. Yes. Um, anybody else want to contribute to this question? Or if you have any contributions, if you have any questions, anything you want to talk about, anything today, please uh, feel free. Feel free. Yes, Sister Linda. Can I ask Mercy to ask the last of the last statement she made? Can you repeat that statement? Because you said something I couldn't. I didn't hear you well. Uh, I just put everything together, which came very spontaneously. <laughs> so I didn't even write it down. So it just came very spontaneous, sister. I'm so sorry. But then uh, I was majorly talking about um, the finishing off of things, you know, like God told Amalekites, sorry, God told Saul to finish off the Amalekites completely. But then uh, Saul did not finish off the Amalekites completely. He kept some part to himself. So my question was, um, are there things like, 
for example, social media is what I spoke about. That is social media something that I'm keeping to myself, you know, while I have finished off, uh, okay, I don't watch movies or probably I don't listen to any secular music, um, uh, you know, uh, but then I'm just holding on to the social media. That was one uh, uh, gist of what I asked. Uh, I hope I was able to convey clearly. Yeah, so I just wanted to say that um, so many times we don't always, you know, classify the things that we do as a God in our life. We would think it's a small thing. So mm -hmm. when when we when we when God was saying don't worship any other God, so we are thinking that if you carve a God, is what God is talking about. So when social media becomes a thing that you are struggling with. That thing has become a god in your life. Exactly. Do you understand? So if you are addicted to social uh, media, you have to be very careful that it's not God over your life. Now, you also made a statement about, you know, worshipping pastors. You know, I, I think I heard that. Now, that was, that was a lot it. of Christians have yes, yes, developed yes, that mindset, you know, in the process of honoring the pastor or honoring the reverend and uh, the one god has placed over your head you then then you start making that person the god instead of our god who we are serving it is very very important that we are conscious of that actions because some of the things that we do maybe we want to do a project instead of you going to god whether it's in the will of god you don't know but as soon as you know, you ask the pastor and the pastor say, do it. Ah, I will do it. Do you understand? Even though it's not in the will of God, but because you idolize the pastor, once the pastor asks you to do it, you are doing it. Do you understand? So it is a very, very important thing that we know that it's not just carve, you know, what we carve is that God. Anything that you cannot control has become God over you. Amen. Uh huh. Amen. On this, on this topic of idolizing, I'm just going to say one statement. Actually, let me leave this for maybe after party because it's already 10, 10 and uh, we're supposed to be having after party right now. So there's one prayer point I want us to pray before we get into this more. And the prayer point is um, this. Um, it says um, in Philemon chapter 1, verses 21, it says, Paul was talking to these uh, people in Philemon. He said, I am confident of your obedience. He says, confident of your obedience, I write to you knowing that you will do even more than I ask. I want us to pray this prayer that the Lord help me to be obedient to your word. Help me to be obedient to whatever you are saying per time, not after time. Some of us know this, like God is telling us to do something now. Before we go and do it, it's long. And we limit the timeline of our breakthrough. Let us begin to decree that, Lord, help me to obey your word. Help me to obey you. Because we, we've, talk, we've spoken about these things, like God is a judge. God is also a king. When he's in his kingship, when he's in his kingliness, when he's speaking to you as a king, he is commanding obedience. And when you do not obey, it might be a long time before you get that opportunity again. Let's begin to decree that, Lord, help me to be obedient. Help me to be obedient to your word. Help me to be obedient. David was obedient and won many battles, many battles. Saul was disobedient and lost that which God has given him. Raman, of course, begin to pray that prayer. Lord, help me to be obedient. Help me, God. I cannot do this on my own now. As I begin to speak, I just begin to remember this story in the New Testament. Rama Sokode, about two people, two brothers. One of them was older, one of them was younger. Father calls and says, do this for me. It's like, no, I can't do it. And he went ahead and still did that thing. 
The second one called Marie Candereble, the younger one, said, do this for me. Yes, I will do it, I will do it, I will do it. He did not do it. Our obedience must be complete, must be timely. Let's declare, Lord, help me, help me, help me to obey your word, to obey your word, to obey what you are saying in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name, we are afraid. One of the things that happens when you obey God's word is that it builds your faith. It builds your confidence. It builds your faith in God. The Bible talks about Abraham. Abraham was hoping for a city whose builder and architect was God. A city that was not seen. And Abraham is the father of faith. It, it takes... It takes obeying God consistently to build your faith. That when challenges comes, when things come, you say, oh God, you know I have done according to your will. You are my shelter. Hold me. You know I have obeyed your word. You are my shelter. Keep me. You know I have obeyed your word. You are my shelter. Help me. We are going to pray this prayer. That Lord, Ramene Koso Kumbiria, Lord, because of my obedience to your word. Please help me and deliver me from affliction. Help me and deliver me. Help me and increase my faith. Help me and increase me, O oh God. Lord, as a reason, O oh God, of my obedience, Lord, let me be stronger in you. Deliver me, deliver me, deliver me. Ramoson Alaba. Yemane Kasekerebo Shiki. Yemene Kerebo Soko de Alaba. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name we have prayed. I was trying to look at that prayer point again. And I'm going to, to I want us to pray that same prayer point, but in a different way. We're going to pray that Lord Jesus, that the faith that comes with obedience to your word, help me, help me, help me with that faith to overcome every struggles in my life. With the faith that comes with the obedience to your word, the faith that comes with obedience to your word, let it move every mountains in my life. The faith that comes with obedience to your word, let it move every mountains in my life. When David inquired of the Lord, he said, "Shall I pursue? Shall I go? Shall I? Will, will I? Will I gain it all?" And the Bible said. Pursue, thou shalt surely overtake, and thou shalt recover it all. And David obeyed the word of the Lord, and he overtook, he pursued, and he recovered everything all. We are going to pray that, Lord, the faith that comes with obedience, let it help me overcome every mountain, every challenge, every struggle in my life. In the name of Jesus, the faith that comes with obedience, you will, let it help me, energize me to overcome everything, every struggle. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, blessed be your name. We give you praise, we give you adoration, we give you glory, Almighty God. We thank you because you are good. Thank you, Lord, because of your word. There are lots of things that have been said today. We pray that your spirit will give its direction in our lives in the name of Jesus. Your spirit will give its direction in your in our lives in the name of Jesus. Your spirit will cause fruits and results to be born out of your word in the name of Jesus. Like never before. Touch our lives, O oh Lord. Bless us, O oh Lord. Our families, our children, our friends, our, our homes are blessed in the name of Jesus. Our careers are blessed in the name of Jesus. Over this weekend, Lord, please take full control. As we tarry, as we take a break and resume on Monday, Lord, strengthen us even the more in your word in the name of Jesus. Blessed be your name. We give you glory. We give you honor. For in Jesus' mighty and excellent name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Amen in Jesus' name. All right. Thank you so much. God bless you, everyone, for joining. You all are wonderful. It's always nice to be here and to share the word of God. So I hope you guys enjoy your weekend. But like I said, this after party, we still have like um, how many minutes? Like 30 minutes of after party before we can go. But if you need to leave now, please, you are free to go. God bless you. Um, one of the things I was going to say, like you said, when they like a lot of people adore pastors and stuff like that. I was just I I just I just sometimes think about it because I find myself sometimes maybe guilty of it. Um a lot of us, because of how internet is easily available, we have so many men of God that have truly blessed our lives. And I find some of the things that some of the things we 
we do is that we take for granted the ones that are within our vicinity because of so much deposition we see you can go online you see so much deposit of spiritual wisdom we begin to adore them do these some people will leave church and listen to a message online it's the truth though um I, I, I know i'm breaking some tables but it's the truth some people will leave church service to go and, and they don't do it once they do it consistently when they forget where they are paying tithes to because I realized that some of the words that pertain to your destiny are being spoken in your vicinity. Before internet was, Christ was. So we have to be very careful in, in idealizing um, people because they give us the word. Yes, there are many people, I'm blessed by many people. But sometimes I begin to realize that the ones that actually, the words that actually causes transformation in my life are people of proximity. A good word is a good word, but a change is due to proximity. That's why you value the relationships around you. You don't play with those things. You can hear a word from any, but you need people that can speak into your life directly, that you can talk to. I, I really think it's important. Sometimes, like, is it all these all these messages that I've heard? Have I not heard it before? There's one time that I used to have, I used to talk to this brother, and before you know it, two years later, all the things that this brother has been telling me since uh, before, I'm, I'm, I'm relearning it, and I'm like, oh, Chai, didn't they tell me about this? Huh? What was wrong with me? Why didn't I, why didn't I believe it? Because we don't honor people. Please, very important, honor those around. Don't idolize them. There's, honor is different from idolizing. Honor is giving regard. To, for what, for who deserves regard, knowing that they have a, a, a purpose in your life, respecting them from the purpose, respecting them for the purpose they have in your life. It is respecting them for the time they have given to you. That is honor. We have to learn honor. We have to learn honor. We hear the message on honor, very good messages, but we don't learn honor. And please, I just know that all of us are children of God. Just a way to encourage us. Let's keep doing uh, things right. Yes, um, Sister Blessing. Sorry. Mistake. Oh, mistake. Oh, I, I was I was waiting for you to give us a very um, juicy, juicy, powerful word of God. Um, anybody else? Any more? Any statement? Any contribution? Any question? Please feel free. This is... Um, I just I'm wanted... At like one more point uh, is that we hear so many messages like I was just thinking we had a discussion among our church members and then we were like there's so many uh, there was some one uh, one editor that was sharing so many messages we hear but then is anything even bearing fruit like what if mm. we just one sermon and mm. we just applied it to our life because James says mm. that we need to do the word and that's this revelation that only when you do the word will you grow in intimacy with Jesus. So there's a lot to do in doing what Jesus has said, right? Like even for this Bible study, there's so much that's been poured out throughout these days. So I think we will be accountable for each and every word that has been poured out because God will ask us, did you really do? And if you did, where is the fruit? You know, so hmm. where a lot. Is the fruit. That's the statement. And just to put some balance into what we just said, um, there's nothing wrong with um, messages. You have to be worded. You have to explore information. People, all the people that in the Bible, Paul, all those, all those people, they they learned broadly. They went and they found. So this, we are we are fortunate to be blessed by a lot of men of God. So please take advantage of it. Take advantage of it. Yet still remember honor in all that you do. That's uh, that's basically what I just wanted to make sure we get. And thank you so much for what you said, Messi. I think it's very important that we realize that we reflect and say, is this word bearing fruit in my life? How have I changed? How has my life? What what am I doing? Am I working according to what in obedience to what word is speaking in my life? It's very very important that we walk in obedience to the word of God. Yes. Does anybody else have any um, statement before we um, we close for tonight?
contribution, words, anything, 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 anything. It could be something different, but just contributions. All right. Um, in the absence of any, love you all. Thank you so much for joining tonight. I hope you guys have a lovely weekend. Thank God it's Friday. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, for some people, it's Saturday already. I hope you enjoy your weekend. And uh, we meet here again on Monday. Please let people know. Share the word. Let uh, people come and be blessed. Yes. Where are all the men of God in this house? Men of God? Where are they? All the men of God. They, they don't come. Today is Friday, Abby. Please, mm, uh, we me on Monday so I will get on them. <laughs> no, it's because of, um, what is it called? Everybody has some one thing or the other to do. Church activities. They have, um, please, please, and I apologize on their behalf. Please, they all have one thing or the other today to do today. That's why they're on assignments, made on assignments. That's why they're not here with us today. Yes. Okay, okay. I'm, I meant to just left. I wanted to say something, but maybe on Monday. All right. Okay. Then. All right. Thank you, sir. Yes. Bye. Good night. Z, is that you or is that another person? The Oluwashen one more time. That's not her.